Now, some of you may know that um, the most likely people to go to prison in this country today are young African-American men, right? A few years ago, there was a report that was done by the sentencing project indicating that about 25% of all um, young men between the ages of, uh, what, 18 and 24 or so were incarcerated. 25%. That was, I think, in 1991. A few years later, the Sentencing Project did a similar report and discovered that within, two, within three or four years, the percentage had soared to 32, over 32 percent. And by now, that percentage has probably gone up. So we're talking about over one-third, over one-third of all young black men in this country in prison or directly under the surveillance and control of the criminal justice system. Now something is wrong with that, don't you think? I mean, one of the problems, of course, is that as we see the material expansion of the criminal justice system, the, what I call the prison industrial complex. There is also an ideological campaign to persuade people that criminals can be recognized by virtue of their race. That as a matter of fact, the figure of the criminal is indeed a young black man. And so all of us learn how to be afraid of young black men. Am I right? And this happens often regardless of what race or ethnicity we might be, because the same thing happens in black communities. That black people learn how to be afraid of young black men. Okay, now I guess I'm supposed to wind up and say some words about what we can do. Uh, because I don't want to um, depress you uh, or frighten you. <laughs> or maybe I do. <laughs> but only if you can move out of that depression or that uh, um, fear and recognize that uh, there are ways to make a difference here. Um, one of the reasons why the prison industrial complex has expanded as it has is because we have learned how to forget about prisons, even if they are in our own neighborhoods, even if we have relatives and friends in prison. And if you look in communities of color, almost everybody knows someone who is there or has been there, but we don't know how to talk about it. We don't integrate um, ideas about what is going on in these places in our daily conversation. We don't teach about uh, the prison system. It's almost as if what this society does, first of all, is gets rid of the people who have the problems, people who have drug problems, you know, rather than recognizing that they are hurting themselves and they need some help. They need someone to help them. Rather than recognizing that, they just send them to prison. And the majority of women who are in prison are in there in relation to drug-related charges, right? And non-violent drug-related charges. So the idea is just, just send them to prison. Throw them away. Get rid of them. And if you get rid of them, then we don't have to think about them. And if we don't have to think about them, then we don't have to think about the problems that they have. So we don't really have to address the issue of drugs, which would require us also to talk about pharmaceutical companies. So I guess what I want to suggest that, that we all do is figure out ways of making these issues visible. 
And for people who have relatives or friends in prison, don't be ashamed of it. Because of the way the criminal is constructed, represented, many of us are even afraid to admit that we know someone who could be that kind of a person. But prisoners are like you and me. I mean, yeah, there's some pretty bad people in prison, but there's some pretty bad people who are not in prison. You know? 